been a while since we spoke about wallet wars, a coin that I termed on this show a while back, and I'm still Ooh. waiting for my wipe control. I need that wallet wars wipe. So it's not good enough to get, get one. On Sorry. I know it's not. I'm just going to put it out there anyways. All right. Robinhood has released the beta version of their Web3 wallet to 10,000 users. So the company has been moving towards a more crypto-friendly approach over the last year, and now their Polygon-based wallet will allow users to trade over 20 cryptos, connect to dApps, and yearn, and earn yields on assets. Will, I'm going to throw this down to you. Robinhood has really kind of been trucking along, moving from from being, you know, a traditional finance app to really embracing the world of crypto. What do you think of this story? Yeah, two points. One tech, one markets related. The first on the tech side, saying there's no trading fees for this, or at least Robinhood typically does not have trading fees, but they're using Polygon. And they're using some other networks, which of course have some sort of trading fees built into it. So this makes me wonder who's paying for this at the end of the day. Somebody is. Maybe it's Robinhood. Maybe it's a like reallocate staking fees, put it back into like the trading fees. So there's something going on there. Do it is a nice little marketing gimmick though. They're they're probably just charging you somewhere else you don't know about. Second point is the no trading fees thing is really important because if you look at market structures, that's where everything is going, right? Robinhood made a big splash because they got rid of that. And a lot of other exchanges have made big splashes because of that. We saw that this summer with Binance in July, they instituted a new policy, no trading fees on about 13 or 14 trading pairs. And since then, their volumes have increased against every single other large competitor out there going into a bear market. What we're seeing there is like consolidation for markets as opposed to like this splintering that we've had for so many years. That's because consumers really care about that price. They don't want to pay that extra 1%, so they're going to go to someone who's a little bit easier to use. That's at the same time as Coinbase actually increasing their trading fees on a lot of their different pairs on Coinbase app. So what we're seeing here is some efficiencies being built into trading apps going to a bear market which is expected, right? Everyone has to get like a little prickly with each other. You have to be a little more competitive. And I'd expect that to continue to happen going into the bear market. Going to throw it over to you, Zach. Yeah, I think this is a really interesting example of Web 2.5, right? Web 2 giants using Web 3 technologies to their liking. I thought the thing that stood out to me is that this is powered by ZeroX Protocol, which is a uh, decentralized exchange aggregator protocol, right? So you have Robinhood kicking the tires, learning about the space, figuring out what's what. And they say, okay, yeah, let's build this thing through ZeroX. That's the best way we can sort of aggregate liquidity across various DEXs. And we're going to use this in a way that's meaningfully Web 3. You know, it's rolled out by a Web 2 company. But I think you can say here, this is meaningfully Web3, right? And I think that's really interesting to watch this evolution unfold. These are companies that come in, they test it out, they sort of start, do baby steps often, you know, in this walled garden, whether they partner with sort of backend providers or other custodians. And then sure enough, they kind of get to this closer to Web3 end state. And I think this is something that actually, you know, may not generate a ton of buzz, but is a really, really interesting signal that these companies are thinking, okay, how do we get something that is truly a bit more decentralized than what we started out with. And I think that's probably the story here for me. I'm curious to see what the next one is. What's the next big Web2 firm? Which Web3 service slash protocol they use and what they ultimately uh, accomplish in bringing these technologies to a bigger audience, which still remains quite small. But Will, I'm going to toss it over to you. What are your thoughts? I'm going to keep riffing with you on this because I think you bring up a really it. important point, which is probably super boring to a lot of people, but it's really important to know like where are you going to place your bets. And my bets are on infrastructure going into a bear market. NFTs are great. Exchanges are great. There's a lot of frills out there in crypto, a lot of ways to make money. And there's also a lot of ways to lose money. There's a lot of cool JPEG monkey things out there that you can buy. But the things that really do well consistently are the infrastructure pieces. And 0x, like you brought up, is a core piece of infrastructure basically allows you to look around at all the different DeFi exchanges out there all the different places that a token might be sitting and what price it's at consolidate that into one market book and then be able to purchase it and so the fact that robin hood went out and is working with zero x and working with that team specifically shows that they know what they're doing they're picking the right winners and they're putting their money on top of a top firm like zero x moving into a bear market so again i think this is a nice idea to bring up right now. Infrastructure really matters. Jen, over to you. 
Yeah, we've kind of covered the progress too, right? From when those job postings went out to, you know, the crypto offering and now the wallet. I think this is really interesting because we spend so much time in this industry talking about UX, user experience. That's what we need to onboard people into crypto. And Robinhood has that user experience, right? And they've gone and they figured out the back end. They figured out how to implement this slowly and it might set them up for really to be in a really good position during the next bull cycle when we see more newbies come into the space. So it will be interesting to watch to see if the crypto native traditional web three companies really do succeed over these, you know, web two, web 2.5 companies that we're seeing who have spent their time doing their research, making the right kind of partnerships to latch onto what they built um, in web two. So I'm looking forward to that.